What's up guys and welcome back to another PC mod video. In this video we are going to be talking about the Shark JF13K Diamond. This is designed for Intel and AMD. As you can see it can fit LGA 1151, 1200 and 1700. For AMD it will fit AM2, AM4 and AM5. This is the box that you get. As you can see it's quite a large box because the cooler is quite wide. And this is the cooler itself. As you can see it's got two 120mm fans, ultra slim and they've directed the fan facing downwards so it's going to blow air towards your motherboard. It is quite large, it's pretty thick as well. The cooling fins are definitely there, good size and it has a total of seven heat pipes so that's pretty good. I wanted to do a full video showing you guys how you install this cooler. We are going to be installing this on the LGA1700. The only difference is if you're going to install it on AM4 you use the exact same backing plate but you would use different hex nuts and the other bracket. What we have here is your mounting bracket, the four retaining screws, and then you've got these adhesive washers. I had to pull it off again to show you guys. And then you've got two sets of hex nuts. The silver ones are for AMD and the black ones are for Intel. You've got your mounting plate here, which has two sides, Intel, AMD. If you're going to be using it for AMD, you would see Intel on the outside. And if you're going to be mounting it for Intel, you would see AMD on the outside. Let's get this mounted on. What we're going to need now are your mounting brackets and the four screws. Flip this over. You've got two holes here. Install your mounting bracket, grab a screw, put on your mounting bracket, and then put a screw in to secure it. Install your next screw. Your bolts are going to be facing outwards because it needs to go through the motherboard. Just hold it in place so the screw holes line up. Screw it down. Depending on what motherboard you're installing it for, 1151 or 1200, you would adjust these accordingly to suit the mounting holes. This is the part that gets a little bit tricky, but this is the easiest way I found to do it anyway. Flip our motherboard over. We are going to, with our cables coming out the top, because that's where they plug into, you are now going to adjust your screws so that they line up with the screw holes. Let's flip this around and just make sure that the other ones line up as well. We want them in the furthest holes because the Asus motherboards have a figure eight shape so that you've got 1200 mounting holes and 1700 mounting holes. We'll flip this over now that we have the bolts through. We'll flip it around and we'll adjust our bolts out so that they line up. We line up our bolt holes, right? And once you have them lined up, you install your adhesive washers so it holds it in place, but make sure that when you're tightening it down that you are on the outer holes, okay? So I'm gonna pull it out as I tighten it just to make sure that it's got tension and it's going to the outer holes. Right, so now that we've got the adhesive washers on, keep your left hand with pressure on it so you hold the board straight. We'll put on our bracket now, hold the board straight. There we go, we've got our bracket on. You need to support it so the board doesn't tilt the other way. We put on our hex nuts, ensuring that all our bolts are coming through the center of our bracket. That's what you want. And then we'll fasten two of them on first so that it holds it in place for us now that we have all our nuts on make sure that it is center remember we wanted the AMD symbol facing out towards us now you use the thumb screw socket that they've given you and just tighten down your nuts until it stops no more than that go a little bit each time until it completely stops and he's completely snug There we go. Now we'll do this one. That is our cooler installed onto our motherboard. Next, you just plug in your cable. So you've got one PWM connector and then you've got a five volt three pin. Line that up and just plug it in. And that completes our installation for this Dewshark JF13K Diamond CPU cooler.
First thing you notice straight away is that it does cover your RAM, it covers most of it. So the only part you're going to be able to see is just this little bit up top here. You can still see your RAM, it's just it covers most of it. It blows air down, so it also cools your RAM at the same time. The fan blows cold air towards it, thereby cooling the fins down, which in turn cools down the plate that connects to your CPU, which cools the CPU. One con I can see straight away is that it covers your RAM. So your RAM is no longer visible if you have RGB, only that little bit at the top that we spoke about. You now have to remove the cooler just to access your RAM. So say your RAM is faulty one day, you have to remove this cooler just to get to the RAM. And another thing, your ATX cable isn't as easy to be plugged in now after you have this installed. Anything along here that's under it, you'd wanna plug in first and then worry about your cooler last. The cooler does look like it will work. We'll do our test in a minute and uh, we'll find out. Right, so now let's plug this all in and uh, let's get testing. We'll test the standard cooler for LGA 1700 and then we'll test a Corsair Hydro 100 240 AIO. Let's just see how it stacks up against a standard cooler as well as an AIO 240. ATX, CPU is fine, it's not covered. Plug that in, plug in a keyboard, mouse, ethernet in case we need some internet and our boot drive. Now let's turn it on. I mean, honestly, guys, it doesn't look too bad. I mean, it is definitely huge. I mean, look at the size of it. Holy crap. It also covers your VRM cover. I won't say it looks really ugly, but it's definitely different. I mean, you could always get used to it. That's enough of that. Let's see how it stacks up. Obviously, with air coolers, the higher your fan speed, the more it's going to cool. We are using a i9-12900KS here, which is basically like a 13700K. So you do want sufficient cooling. I will be using Hardware Info for its temperature. We'll also run MSI Afterburner as well, just so we have two softwares going, so we can compare. Uh, let's go to CPU temperatures. Just want to see our temperatures. According to a bit of research that I've done, multi-core runs quite hot on the i9-12900s and 1300s, etc. Tends to sit at about 90 degrees, so anything about 110 is a bit too much so let's see how we go as you can see here you've got current minimum maximum and average it is at 100 percent working overtime holy crap you can pretty much just see here your core temps we can see we're sitting on about 90 degrees and here we're sitting on 86 so it's about right see we're still running at 100 percent cpu we're running multi-core right now. Temperature is pretty much staying at that 90 degrees mark. It's definitely overworking the crap out of it. Right, so that was the multi-core benchmark. Now let's do the single core. Right, so here is our single core benchmark for Cinebench R23. We've already been running it for a little bit, as you can see. It's a 10 minute test. It's already been going for almost seven minutes. This pretty much gives you a fair idea of how it performs in single core. Obviously a lot better than multi-core because it's not doing as much. There's not so much strain on the CPU. For multi-core, it was hitting like 100% utilization because it was running every single core. As you can see for single core, which is basically gaming performance, it, it runs very well and this cooler definitely does the job. All right, so all in all, you can see that our single core performance matched Pretty much identical system is the dark one. We scored 1,926 and that is 1,983. So we're in second place according to all these other ones. As for the multi-core, we scored pretty high. We were pretty much on top. The temperatures pretty much stayed at about that 40 to 50 degrees. So that's really good for single core performance, I think. So it definitely does its job in that sense. Multi-core performance. If you're going to be using this for constant rendering, 3D modeling and things like 3D editing and stuff like that, where you're constantly using multi-cores and using them all the time, you would probably get a better cooler because for whatever reason, I know they say that the 
12th gen, 13th gens are expected to run at about 90 degrees and you would only be concerned when it goes from say about 105 to 110. However, the cooler you keep your CPU, the longer it's going to last. With that said, you would probably want to get yourself a cooler that definitely keeps it in that 80 degree mark because that's definitely where you want it. On idle, your CPU is only going to sit at about 30 degrees around there. But under max load, you definitely want your CPU to be sitting at about that 80 degree mark. That's what I think is the sweet spot. But let me know what you guys think. Now for the standard one, let's go. You can see here, I've opened up current core temperatures for CPU. Afterburner, you can see here, CPU temp right here. CPU temp, CPU usage, and here you can see we've got the 12900KS, and we'll see what it's running at percentage-wise, utilization. All right, let's start with multi-core. Already you can hear the, the fan going crazy. This is the standard fan, guys. It would completely shock me if this somehow keeps up with that other cooler. It would make a lot of sense why as well, because the other cooler limits how the hot air is taken away now in a case it might be different because you'd have other fans helping to blow the hot air away like front fans top fans rear fan in this situation it's just a bench test so you have no other fans helping to cool it down keep that in mind as well 90 degrees basically so these two seem to be the same 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 84 degrees for core temperatures for DTS. Now bear with me because I haven't done this before. I'm, I'm very new to benchmarking with Cinebench. But I hope all the information is here for you guys to see. And it is pretty loud actually. When you put it inside a case behind tempered glass, you're not really going to uh, hear it. It pretty much stays the same all throughout the test. All right, now let's do single core. Okay, so that was the standard cooler. What did you guys think? As you can see here, we've got the AIA connected. There's the radiator just over there, Corsair. Okay, first let's go with the uh, multi-core. You can see here you've got uh, utilization up to 100. You've got your temperatures here. You've got CPU usage here as well, CPU temperature here. And these are your separate cores. You can see CPU 6, 7, 8, 9, temperatures right here, okay. So the top one here is your core temperature current and the bottom one here is your CPU package current. Right, so now that we know it's running Cinebench, I'll zoom you guys into here so you can see more of the temperatures. It's just finished up its multi core test. Now let's go for our single core. Just select single core, we'll start it now, and let's see how it performs in single core.
All right, that pretty much finishes our testing. <clears throat> you can see here that it's just going to finish rendering, but it's already given us our average temperature, so that's great. We'll just wait for this to finish. Okay, that's all done now. Right, so that completes our testing for the Shark standard cooler and this AIO. I really hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Remember that this is my first time showing you guys a bench test like this. So I really hope it was helpful. And it did show you the information that you needed in order to make a educated decision about getting which cooler and which cooler suits your needs. Till next time, this is Mike with Mikey's Vlogs, signing off. Bye for now, guys.